Good. Anyone who wants to hear the story will listen to the story. It's a beautiful story. I just read it yesterday. And in fact, I knew the story. But I read it again. I have to admit that I cried when I heard the story. What's the story? And the story is, is that it was told by a man. The man must be now, I guess, in his you know, 70s or whatever. And he said, when the war broke out, and maybe he was in his 80s, when the war broke out, this fellow says he was about six years old. He lived in Belgium, and the, the Nazis attacked Belgium. So his parents had to run away. So they ran away, and they, they were different places. Finally, they ended up somehow or other they, they, in France. And in France, they, were, uh, they, they went also from place to place. There wasn't any food. It was all confusion. And especially they went to the Chabad community there in France. And they treated them very nicely and accepted them very nicely, but there simply wasn't any room. There wasn't any food. And everybody, so the, the parents realized that the only way that they could, they had a chance of existing is that they put him in an orphanage. I guess it was a Jewish orphanage, I guess, or, or maybe it wasn't, but anyway. To put him into an into a, a orphanage and that then they would be more mobile. They could, and also he would be more safe because if they were taking him with him, who knows if they would get killed. Anyway, so they put him there. So they said the conditions there were terrible. <clears throat> and all the kids, there were little kids, three years old, and they'd been separated from the parents. And the kids were depressed, and there wasn't any food, and they had to sleep on the floor. He said, and some man used to come, I, I guess, every day or, or several times a week. And he would bring bread, and he would bring sometimes butter and like sardines. And he would feed the kids individually. <laughs> he would feed them. And sometimes there were kids that didn't want to eat. They were, you know, depressed or whatever. And he would put them on his lap and he would sing to them and he would tell them stories and encourage them. And he would feed them. And he said to the point that there were some other kids that they were jealous because he would show them, you know, care. And the other, the, the kids there were basically abandoned. So there were other kids that faked being depressed so that he would take them and put them on his own. And they, they just called him Monsieur. Monsieur, that was his name, Monsieur. And a real nice man. So then afterwards, uh, this lasted for, I don't know, a couple of months. And he said, this man saved a lot of children's lives and he gave them, you know, hope. And, and uh, that's it. After the war, it ended up that he was reunite, reunited with his parents after the war. His parents, I guess, looked for him and they, you, they re, you reunited. And they moved to America. By this time, he was like, I don't know, 14, 15 years old. And his father was a religious Jew. So he said, listen, we have a chance to go into the Lubavitcher Rebbe. They weren't Chabad Hasidim. But you remember how, the, I remember how they treated us really nicely over there in France. Just to go in, I hear he's a very great man. You know, he gives out blessings. This is like in the 50s, who knows, 52, 53, whatever. So uh, maybe we can go in and tell him thanks, you know, for the, the Chabad people, how they treated us. And, and we'll get a blessing, you know, maybe advice. So they went in, as soon as they went in, so they went in, the Rebbe looked, he says, this man telling the story, he says, the Rebbe looked at me, he was, I don't know, 13 years old. The Rebbe looked at me and he said, Dovele. And he said, I looked. <laughs> he said, I looked at the Rebbe. I said, how do you know my name? He said, Dovele, you were in. He said, he looked at him and said, you, monsieur. You're the one that came every day to the, to the, the, the orphanage. And he said, yes. And he talked to him. And he, it ended up that the Rebbe knew the names of every single child that was there. And he remembered the names. And he remembered his face. He had already grown. This was like, you know, uh, bare minimum, it was six, seven years later. You know, it was six, six, seven, eleven, because the Rebbe was in France. It was, what, 1940, 41. And the Rebbe became the Rebbe in, 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 in 51. So I'm not, not six years. It was 10 years later, right? 10 years later, 10, 12 years later. So he remembered who it was. So this just shows, you know, the, the nature of the Rebbe and the, the, the importance of doing a good deed with uh, love and care of other people. Have a good day with Mashiach now.